Welcome to One Simple Recipe, where we are hopefully putting you one step closer to better health. My name is Judy Matusky, and I am a registered dietitian and culinary nutritionist with Athens Nutrition, and we're back again on Thursdays at 11.30 to do our One Simple Recipe for the week. This week, it's going to be a blender or food processor pumpkin muffin because I'm not quite done with pumpkin yet. <laughs> I was dedicating the month of November to nothing but pumpkin recipes because they're just, I just love pumpkin. And even though you can get canned pumpkin all year round, I think we tend to just focus on it really in the fall, especially this time of the year. But it is just so fabulous. So I didn't want to give up. So we've got one more day in November. So we're going to do another, we're going to do another really quick and easy recipe. So this is really just so simple. I love it because you, again, simple ingredients, in just in a food processor or a blender and then you're going to pop them in a muffin tin and put them in the oven so this this is couldn't actually really be easier all right so it's um and what's nice about this recipe too there's a couple quick things is it's gluten-free because if you're using gluten-free oats um then there's no flour in this the only the only flour is really coming from the um, old-fashioned oats that we're going to just whirl up a little bit here on the food processor so that's kind of nice for those of you that need that and it is a really nice recipe because they freeze really well. So you make them ahead. I usually do a double batch um, and then I freeze them. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put, um, we're going to use two cups of just old fashioned oats and they're going to go in the food processor. If you are using a blender, go ahead and just add them to the blender. And then we're just going to whirl it up a little bit. And this whole thing is I'm trying to trying to set the camera so that you guys can really see this a little bit better. Um, last, the last, I think our last video was a little bit hard. So we're just breaking up the old fashioned oats a little bit just to break them down. We'll get a, a little bit of like oat flour, but still we want some texture and some pieces of the oats. So let me just whirl this up a little bit. Um, really not probably more than 30 seconds. Just break it down. show this to you so you can see where it has like you know a little bit of um there's like a fine you can almost see a little bit of oat flour texture to it but there's also little bits of the of the oats that are still that are still you know um going to help to give it some some extra texture all right then it's just a matter of adding all the other ingredients so it's so easy so i'm just gonna uh, there's no real order except i'm gonna start with the pumpkin because as i was standing here before i went on live i was like oh take a peek at the side that the nutrition fact label on the pumpkin just like I'm gonna just read it basically this is just all pumpkin so 100% pumpkin and I don't know I love pointing these things out because I feel like every food we buy for the most part has a nutrition fact panel on it and I don't think a lot of us probably spend time looking at it maybe we do and if you do that's fantastic but you know sometimes we're just grabbing things and we're not really but I was like Okay, so half a cup of pumpkin, half a cup of pumpkin is only 45 calories, which is incredible, right? It's a vegetable. Most vegetables are going to be a little bit on the low side when it comes to that. And it has three grams of fiber, which is nice. We pick up some fiber from the pumpkin. Well, what was really mind-blowing when I really looked at it, because I know pumpkin is a really great source of vitamin A, which is in the form of beta carotene, because any, any, you know, orange, um, deep orange vegetable um, will have that. But in a half of a cup, it's 100%. So you get your full day's supply of vitamin A just in half of a cup of pumpkin. So that was just, I was like, wow, that's pretty impressive. And I, I mean, I know it's high in vitamin A or beta carotene, but I didn't realize it was quite that high. So how cool is that? So we're going to use a half of the can for this recipe. Now, when I double the recipe, which is um, I, I always do, because I don't really want to be left with just a half a can of pumpkin. So, but the only thing is, is in my food processor, because it's not big enough, um, I have to do one recipe and then I just do it again uh, because I just can't fit everything in. If you, have a, if you have a larger capacity food processor or a bigger blender, you probably could just do it all at once. All right, so that was about, oh, let me just put a little bit more. I don't know if that's quite happening. So we've got half a can of pumpkin and then we're gonna add two eggs. All right, how do you have those, 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 um, cracked and now we're just I'm using um, plain yogurt it's about a cup of plain yogurt I almost always have um, buttermilk in my in my refrigerator not everyone does so you could use buttermilk in this but I 
I, I always have plain yogurt and I almost always have buttermilk. So I'm gonna do the plain yogurt because that's what the recipe calls for. So we're, it's a full cup of the plain yogurt. And you want, you know, we can go low fat or fat free. We don't need a full fat yogurt for this because again, we don't really need that saturated fat from the full fat yogurts. Now, I was just thinking about this. So when it comes to like an anatomy of a muffin, the one thing that um, I always think about when we're making muffins is that muffins really, for the most part, most recipes, and if you're buying them out, are really kind of glorified um, glorified cupcakes. So they're really not they're really not meant, in my opinion, to be for breakfast. They're really meant to be almost for dessert. So when I'm making muffins, or if I'm if I'm curating sort of muffin recipes, what I'm trying to do is see if we can come up with you know again texture and flavor and all of that. But that that we want certain things to show up in the muffin, especially if we're trying to use these for breakfast. So we want the whole we ideally whole grain. That would be a base, so whether it's whole grain flour or whether we're using the whole oats, so there's our whole grain. Um, we want some, it's nice to have some sort of fruit or veggie in the muffin too, so we can kind of work towards getting, towards our serving, you know, to start the day. So we're using the pumpkin in this as that, as, as that vegetable component. It's nice to have some, some source of fat. This is an interesting recipe because there's really no added fat to this. Usually there's oil or something added or maybe a nut butter. Lots of times it's butter, regular butter. But um, this is, doesn't, doesn't need it. The pumpkin, I think, is so moist that it brings that moisture and texture to the muffin so you don't need any additional fat. But it's nice to have some for satiety in the morning. So like if I make a pumpkin muffin, I might you know even spread a little almond butter on it or have some nuts with it. Just kind of to get some of that healthy fat in the morning. But a recipe typically we might have olive oil in it, it might have maybe uh, mashed avocado, it might have nut butter. Those are really healthy sources of fat. So the whole grain, healthy fat, some sort of fruit and vegetable. And then it's nice to have that protein source. Typically it's probably gonna be eggs, but it could be cottage cheese, like our power waffles that we made um, two weeks ago. It could be um, in the form of yogurt, whether it's Greek yogurt or regular yogurt, that's gonna bring in a little bit of protein. So it's nice to sort of have all of those balanced components in your muffin, especially if you want these muffins to be for breakfast, right? Which is typically what most of us are gonna, gonna have them. All right, just a little bit of about, a little, uh, like a, a, the anatomy of a, of a healthier muffin, that's sort of what I'm looking for. All right, so now we're gonna use, the sweetener we're using is maple syrup. Again, it's not that nutritionally there's anything different between maple syrup and brown sugar or regular sugar for the most part. It's more flavor, and I feel like the maple syrup also helps to keep things, um, the, the, the muffins from you know getting dry or drying out. So that's kind of nice. So we have a quarter cup of that. Now it's just a pinch of salt. And um, I think it's, I always forget if it's half, it's half a teaspoon of baking soda. These are our leaveners, so half a teaspoon of baking soda, and then we're gonna do a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. All right, just a half. And then some spices. So if you have the, pump, like again, I've been using, I think all my pumpkin um, videos, I was talking about, you know, pumpkin pie spice, which I, I just never have. So I always have the individual spices. So. I'm gonna do that. Uh, if you have pumpkin pie spices, maybe two teaspoons. I'm gonna use about, oh, half a teaspoon of ginger. Um, I didn't get, I forgot to get my nutmeg out, so I guess I'll just skip that. But then I'm gonna do a full teaspoon of my, oh gosh, I'm almost at the end of my, I'm at the, almost at the end of my cinnamon. I have to grab some. It's this time of the year you're baking with so much cinnamon or cooking with so much cinnamon. So I'm gonna use a full teaspoon of cinnamon. If I had the nutmeg out, I would sprinkle some of that in, but I don't, which I don't think we're really gonna miss it. Um, and then I think the only thing left to do is to add, let me just make sure, I think the only thing left is to add the vanilla. So I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of vanilla, maybe a little more, all right. And I think that's it. So just as a, just as a replay on this, so we have the, we have the old fashioned oats that went in, we have the pumpkin, we have the, the yogurt or buttermilk if you wanted to use that, we have two eggs, we have then all the dry like leavening, we have the baking powder, baking soda, we have cinnamon, um, ginger and nutmeg or your, all, your pumpkin um, spice, and just, a, just, a, just a, like a pinch of some salt. That's it. Now we're just going to blend this right up. Okay, so give this, give this a whirl. All and that's it. That's it. There you go. We got the batter. Um, that is, let me just steal this back. Um, 
That's the uh, that's the end of it. And the nice thing about this particular recipe is that you know with with when you're making muffins, if you're using flour, you don't want to overmix them because you just don't want them to get too kind of you know kind of tougher. You want them to be flaky and nice, or at least crumbly, right? This doesn't have any gluten in it, and it's the gluten that ca that creates that um, that will firm up, make things get a little bit tighter and a little bit tougher. But because this is gluten free, and we, we can do it in a food processor and a blender. You wouldn't typically necessarily do that with some of the other muffin recipes, but you certainly can with this one. All right, so here we go. I'll just show this to you. So that's that's the batter, really nice. And then I'll just gonna take this, and and I do have some that I, I had some that I had made before that were in the freezer, and I just pulled them out, so I'll show those to you. But then this makes 12 muffins. So I have a, I, and I did spray them. And then I usually take my quarter cup measure and that's, I think it's about a quarter cup, pretty much does it, yeah. A quarter of a cup, if you use that to, to kind of ladle it out and put them in your muffin tins, that is the perfect portion, all right? And that should get you 12 muffins, all right? So anyway, so this would go in a 400 degree oven and it will bake, I think like 20 minutes or so, just kind of check on it. So you're just gonna, I'm just gonna finish those. You could, if you wanted to, sprinkle a little bit of the old fashioned oats on top. If you wanted to, you could sprinkle a little bit of, um, maybe like a demerara kind of sugar, you know, the coarser sugar. Um, I'm gonna just leave them as is. Let me just show you the finished ones. So I pulled these out this morning. So these I, I baked the other day. And you can see, what I, the other thing I'm gonna mention is, Again, because I am a dietitian, and this is sort of part of the, the sort of eating in a, in a healthier eating pattern, is that I want you to just sort of look at the size of these. So they don't they don't really rise a whole lot. They're going to rise up a little bit, but that's that's fine. Um, you, this is really the the portion size of a muffin. This is what it should look like, and it would be about like the size of the muffin that's in your muffin tin with maybe a little rise. Just compare that to the size of the muffins that you you see at the supermarket or in the bakery. They could be two or three servings of muffins. It's just a lot. Like I said, they're just big cupcakes. Um, but this is really a portion out for breakfast. You know, you definitely might want two of these for sure. Um, or one with, um, you know, maybe with some extra nuts or some nut butter on it or a side of cottage cheese or maybe a little side of yogurt and some berries or something just to sort of balance it out. Uh, again, just uh, everybody depends on what your energy needs are. So anyway, but that's what they look like. I'm going to see if I can, let me just open one up for you a little bit. No, they're actually still a little bit frozen, but I don't know if you can tell, but they are really nice inside. And what I love about these is they stay really well in the, in the freezer and you can, you know, grab them and go and then pop them in the microwave. When I, when I have them, I usually do warm them a little bit in the microwave, especially if I had made them ahead and that I just feel like that just makes them taste even better. All right, so give these a try, super easy. Again, that'll probably be the end of our pumpkin for the for the season, and uh, we'll be back. I'll be back next week. Just remember, if you love these videos, please share them with friends and family. If anyone that you know that really could benefit from just eating a little bit healthier, um, we would appreciate that. Reach out with any questions. And as, as always, you know, we're going to be moving into January and I know a lot of us start thinking about our health and things that we kind of have put off, you know, through this year, particularly when we get into this busy season. So if you need any help with um, any sort of eating or nutrition, um, diet advice, you know, meal plan prepping for whatever nutrition concern that might you might have, just reach out. We would be happy to, to meet with you. We are virtual at fully telehealth, so it makes it really convenient, and uh, we can, you know, get you set up with a really good eating plan that might meet whatever, you know, nutritional uh, needs you might have based on whatever sort of, you know, illness or something that you might be wrestling with, whether it's with elevated cholesterol, whether it's diabetes, or whether it's just trying to, you know, trying to reach that, uh, just a little bit of a healthier weight that might help you to, you know, just feel a little bit better and to help you bring some of those numbers down. So anyway. Athens Nutrition, we're here for you, so reach out whenever possible, if needed, and I will see you again next week at the same time. Take care.